CLG now, um, dropping over at Skyhook. And, you know, uh, we talked about it, Zach Mazer coming in, filling, and he's doing a fantastic job with the squad. Doesn't look like really they've uh, skipped the beat there. Yeah, not at all. And Zach has a very aggressive play style, similar to Madness. It's just interesting that they're able to do so well with different play calls going on because you would think that the roster shuffle would mean a pretty big deal when your Wraith ends up being your IGL most of the times as well. So it's been a, a great uh, adaption that they've had throughout all of this. And also when you go over towards Skyhook and get a lot of loot like CLG's gotten the respect for, you always tend to do really well as well. So the rotations are going to be fairly common. This backside is completely zooted. You get all the loot you need. Yeah, uh, Havoc along with the EVA 8 for Vaxlon. No armor quite yet, but that was just the roof of his building. NPL versus Navi. NPL just full send on to them here. But Straf is a, uh, Strafe, excuse me, is able to pick up one. NPL uh, bring this down to a 1v2 now as the scan comes out. But you always have to be wary of the third party. Will it be this quickly, though? Rakos is trying his best to get a finish off with the melees. It's for the 47, does Ronnie. Now he backs away for the reload as Dracos will go for the peak on the left side. It's on the right. And Ronnie will be able to finish off Navi. And they secure the plus three. They'll be able to get the res onto Bambino. It's just about the timing. Will there be a third party? Hold that for a moment as we join on board with the Intel versus Cheese It fight. They've already gone two down. It's all up to Prodigy Aces, I believe. Does go for the peak out. Panders was going for the loot and he gets punished for that prodigy aces tries to push up they go for uh the peak out but oh no panders his body is gonna stop them from trying to go for the peak now the bubble is gone though and six does fully heal up it's gonna be the double swing on out and prodigy aces goes down team intel take the 50 50 three games in a row now nice job by tim and team intel just continuing that momentum right there let's take a look at someone that has scanned for us and find out where this zone is going to be as team rockstar continues their fighting over here ping going on the back side of this building, which we've seen a lot of fun zones end back here. I haven't seen one in a while, but they spotted someone out and he looks to be by himself as Pickett's following the footsteps. Got the set very fresh. You can tell exactly where that player is going, especially now that that bubble's down and this player isn't going to last much longer. Yeah, it's going to be the remnants of NPL here. As uh, we were saying, the third party, you have to worry about in a rock star or uh, a team that do quickly adjust to these kinds of play styles. When they see the 50-50s, they come in for the uh, to take advantage of it, and uh, they're going to benefit from that. Uh, Crummy and Matt Pickett already on purple armors. Tech is the only one sitting on a white for now, but they should be able to uh, get that uh, changed up very shortly here. They just need to find the rest of the squad. We're already down to 18 teams here. As TSM give us that information for the ring, it is pulling up here towards Epicenter slash Refinery. The scan comes out, and Imperial Hell has been caught it out, but uh, caught out. Excuse me. He's pushing up to the high. Reps getting shot at along with Snipe down, but they have reformed. Now they're going to try and challenge the roof here, as uh, Reps will peek out from the right. But instead, they're happy. It looks like with just gaining control over this roof building, um, over this side of the roof at least, and they can coexist, coexist for now. Yeah, this is going to be fine, and you can see how fast TSM, once they realize that they're in position to go and take a priority spot in zone, that they get out of there and pick their spot. This team looks like they're going to rotate all the way over towards that toilet bowl slash donut, whatever you want to call it, but this is very common to happen over towards the refinery side. Same with Sorting Factory, but even more so on refinery, as we see another fight happening between Rockstar, finishing off the rest of Ronnie, not letting him rat it out in that type of instance, and little armor swap there for crummy when he gets back up make things just a little bit easier as tech slides down the hill like rambo and six his nose and some free loot there and nice job by rockstar like you said very good adaption to come through and kind of figure out the way that things are going as it looks like dracos may be able to get the banner here he's going to be ratting this out just a little bit on the tomcat rat cam most likely going to go for that one in about 20 to 30 seconds i'm not sure if he's going to get it but let's let's go ahead and switch through and see What's up with this map and where the rest of these teams are going to be? Yes, third impact over towards Refinery. And that's exactly what we want to see. How many teams are actually coexisting and setting up over towards that Refinery area? Looks like everyone's taking this pretty seriously. Well, it's been a couple of quick kills and quick fights on the 50-50s. Everybody getting to good, to good positions here. Yeah, we've got third impact off tarts, TSM. All pulling into Refinery, trying to have a great building to control. This is one of those end zones where if you do find yourself in the... If you do find a good spot, you can still play for that early game, mid game, 
uh, pick off potential, try to get some kills as teams are rotating in because that hill is definitely a hill that you will die on. As the scan comes out, one side of the toilet bowl, like you said, Jazz spots that one out. He only gets two on the scan, though, so that makes him a little bit wary. And uh, you see the bubble being used as well from a team rotating in all the way to the northern side right now. Thrice Crispy Treats, though, who are um, rotating through as you do have a small connect out from that nade. Here comes another one from Stunny as uh, the pings are going down. It's a big crossfire, so he's a little bit hesitant to try and push up, but he is looking for his angle to try and get in now in the front line with that Wraith. He spots one out, gets the ping, and that team is out of there. How determined are Rice Krispie Treats going to be in trying to find the squad? Looks like they're pretty desperate, to be honest. But then they realize the more we shoot and the less we connect, the more likely someone's going to come into this building directly behind us. So we have to back off, think about how we're going to continue to advance and gatekeep this player just a little bit later. As Team Razor, do they realize that a team is inside on the second level right now? They don't have horizon to go and take this high ground it's going to be difficult to go and try to take this fight so it's more of just a scouting tactic coming in from zero tricky to see if they could rotate instead they're going to be stuck on this high ground which isn't that bad of a spot we see a lot of teams win from this situation but once the zone moves over towards refinery you're going to have about seven or eight teams just like a firing squad waiting for you to make your way down the hill armor soft's going out as well muffins uh he is the one with the charge rifle so he should be the one trying to focus down to uh focus on getting the damage up and he will watch the back as well and they have their information on the ring and they have elected to just play uh in, on the rocks for the time being intel rotating their way through guys are half found themselves in a fight as uh six has to back away he will throw down the barrel to cover that door as it's just panders by himself he's getting hit by metro's defense bombardment and so they're waiting for that one to go down and looks like the crossfire is being set up. Another team is getting involved in this fight as well. And now Intel are on the back foot. They have to be careful. They've got no armor to work with. You see the bats getting popped by everyone right now as Panders is in a fight. But Six and Metro will be able to stick their bats as they do get naded out now. Six cracked once again. And it's going to be Six to go down first as Panders and Metro are now going to have to fight it out in the ring. They take uh, the gravity lift to get onto the roof. It was 3.03 coming in for the challenge now as uh, Metro will heal up once again. Again, Panders is forced to syringe. He needs to as the ring is ticking away on him. It's going to be Noko squad on the other side, but they're getting third party from the team coming in from the choke right now. Noko, be careful. His bull has already been used and he does slide back to the rest of his squad and hasn't been punished. For the time being, it looks like with the, the amount of teams in the area, things have slowed down as no one really wants to full commit and throw into a third party. And so Noko squad will go ahead and back away off this fight. Yeah, Tanner are electing to hit a battery there because they realize how important the rotation is that teams are gatekeeping. And if they can't get up over towards this ledge, walking up there is extremely difficult. So that's some nice movement there coming in from Team Noka Puffs, realizing the situation that you can't just fight that uphill battle. It's one of the more brutal fights to go and decide that you want to go and take. Team Liquid holding a spot that we see CLG and TSM hold down fairly often. They come through in this backhand rotation here as Tanner actually gets a knock somehow with the charge rifle onto Senox. So it goes from being in shambles and having to fight uphill to going to a knock. That's the type of rotation that can pay off for you as Team Liquid now spots a team out over towards this train cart. That is CLG. We just said how CLG, TSM, and a lot of other teams go over here and that's going to be the finish onto Hal. So TSM actually is in the vicinity too from all the way over on the refinery side. So now Team Liquid starting to pinch since they were playing the edge. That's going to be a bubble coming in from Podstick. Flanker's going to have to heal. But this is a tough rotation. They may not be able to force their way into this. Yeah, the port is going to come out. They're going to go into survey camp instead. There's just too much open ground, too much resistance for them. So they will avoid this fight for the time being. But oh boy, a lot of damage going down onto Nocturnal. They've already used the bubble as well. It's going to be Muffins with that charge rifle. But... Luckily for him, he's in a small corner here, and they'll try to utilize uh, the knock shield and buy as much time as possible. And after it goes down, they'll probably just body block. But the res does come out. They will be able to get him up. They don't even need to use the bubble for that. Do Reezer try to get aggressive off of this? The scans from Flinker are keeping them at bay for the time being. The scout counter scans, though, giving away all their positions for now. They're trying their best to heal up. They get underneath this bridge. 
they will have a moment of reprieve, but there's only 30 seconds left. Sentinels were able to recover themselves as they were pushing out from this choke. They've got a squad that looks like pinned down. Great nade hitting for the 79 now as uh, he wants to get aggressive. Here comes Retzi pushing right into the bubble against all three of them. And they're just watching on as Sentinels just ape right on top of them. Somehow not taking out that Wraith. Tanner will go down. Crust falls for his efforts, but it's going to be a 1v2 that Sentinels ultimately end up winning. And they will get the res onto Crust just in time as the ring will start closing in that bubble just slowly made its way or that grenade slowly made its way underneath the bubble right there and has completely changed that fight around what a job there from team sentinels taking out our winners from game number four now team pop darts who's been the team that's locking down this little donut toilet bowl area he has another team that's above him that's very common as well to be coexisting over here because the zones end here quite often to be honest with you so you see portal being popped but most likely not going to be used as they're just going to be using those scans back and forth running around making sure that they just check each door keeping their head on a swivel so well this spot is nice a lot of times this is a former watson meta as it looks like a failed kidnap attempt is going to come through but a lot of times you see the watson generator in the corner right where those boxes are and there's fences all over the place so this easy this spot is a lot easier to hold so pop tarts you could see the kind of struggle that they're going through right now yeah pop tarts uh they did take a lot of damage their impulse was able to survive though with about two hp now really it's for the saving grace of every other squad around them keeping other teams at bay otherwise damage like that the squad would send it on uh to them but uh, you do have to play, of course, for the late game. There's still 14 squads remaining, 39 players left in the lobby. As round number two finishes closing, we'll have an idea of where this ring pulls now, but it should continue to pull on over. No, it starts pulling away from Refinery. We do have the yellow tanks that are still in, and so that could be a final endgame circle. As Team Razor now looks like they're porting in. They want to get aggressive. This might be Team Liquid that's ahead of them here. Let's see, of course, Muffins get the knock earlier on. Uh, as they push in for a building and they don't find anyone so it looks like really not getting much off of it but of course they use that port so they can retake the high ground if they want to they're predicting a survey ending so everybody is completely fooled by this one setting up over towards refinery we saw about six seven teams coexisting in the buildings and now the big brain rotation coming in from team razor is they are one of the first teams to make their way into those buildings but now since the zone is moving everybody freaking out and realizing that they got to go and make the move 303 comes through with the sound cues and realizes that that's an, another scan and a grenade that just gets ran right through coming in for paradise pops the battery behind that cooling vent and the rest of his team going to follow this one up beast of the hunt being popped from bambino that's going to be a scan for ascii to come through and lay down some damage with the massive which he does this is a fellow amia team with third impact on the other end the receiving end of this fight coming in as three or three does have the two versus one advantage right now will they go for the res or will they go for the finish looks like they're trying to pump, punch him up the stairs just which stair does he want to go up looks like the left side here and the res will come out from bambino yeah the third party was waiting to try and come in for this the nades to block off that entrance and so they will be able to get ascii up just in time as well he'll be able to get the full heal and they do have this building to play off of so now down to 13 squads we have 37 players ascii gets the full heal off and they do have full roof control as well do 303 wondering where teams like tsm are currently playing right now we did see they had an angle uh to shoot at that clg liquid fight that took place to the north and here it is tsm have decided to push all the way up to the compound on the north side they have control over all these buildings. Doritos, the car, along with this two-story now, is Hal. He's going to use this height to great effect. He's got that G7 scout, but he's running out of light ammo. Imagine that. Yeah, Hal running out of light ammo. Well, it's a li little bit more conservative when you have the scout single fire instead of the R9, which we're used to seeing him rip across the map in the R3 as well. But Team Liquid's still on this one, picking up some kills over towards the side. Look at all the teams that are over towards Epicenter still having to rotate over towards the top of the hill. That could be a lot of kill opportunities or just a bunch of teams griefing each other and ending up with a rat. As it looks like Snipe Down wanted to get aggressive with some sort of play, but he's going to back off with the Q and just wanted to kind of scout out exactly what was going down over towards the bottom hand side as it looks like Nocturnal finishes off Senox there with the R301. But... Here's the teams over towards Epicenter. This is going to be absolutely brutal. This round does close, but as this one moves, all these teams are going to fight, and then the teams on top of the hill are getting all the, all the kills and all the loot. 
Yeah, Team Intel have a squad that are still pinned down inside the tower right now. They have to worry about getting shot from the high ground to the north and northeast of them as well as the scans come out. Uh, Intel, they're not running uh, a Recon Legend. They're not running a Bloodhound. Uh, and so it's hard to try and push that team that's inside the tower, even though, of course, there's really just that one angle right now. Do they have the utility? Do they have the extra barrels to try and toss in to slowly choke them out? Looks like they are pretty intent now of finishing off this squad as they're current, currently setting up for it. Panders looking for the flank. Metro and Six might push up from the front. There's a barrel that catches out Panders. And you saw the instant pivot from that squad. We have to check our flank. They send two people back there. Even throw down a Thermite to cover off that angle. The damage tar marker going down onto Panders. Keeps, the inf uh, keeps that Bloodhound uh, watching the back for now. But as that dissipates, it looks like he will find his opportunity to try and peek in. Shoots in with the Eva Ape. The squad has ported out. So Team Intel, was, we're not able to find the timings on this. I thought he was going to grab lift in there. That would have been hilarious. Then those players wouldn't have been able to take the portal. But they do find another player that was coming down, sliding through as they get some help from Team Pringles. But again, these teams have to rotate. So the longer they sit there the more likely they are all to die here. And they're just kind of trying to go out with as many kill points as possible as Team Pringles has been a team that loves to get to the end game. But now they make their move as Applejacks, they're going to go down over towards 303. 303 continues to be a force to be reckoned with over towards the refinery side, but it doesn't bounce back to survey. It bounces back over towards the refinery. So the teams like TSM are going to be rewarded for their patience over towards that side. Yeah, TSM, I like the fact that they took the compound instead of trying to play the yellow tanks. It's just, it's not as easy, easy of a position to play when you don't have that Watson. Uh, but here it is, Team Intel with Pringles getting, uh, losing a member here. They're going to be able to push up this hill, it looks like, for relatively free. And we do have the black hole, but it is dodged out as they slide away from this one. Bubble has been used by Metro here, but he's taking a ton of damage. And right now, they haven't been able to find a kill quite yet. Panda's going to start taking ring, ring damage here. He doesn't have the gravity lift, but he's going to go ahead and climb up instead, taking some additional damage now. They have to continue to push in with the zone as well. Metro goes down to the ring. They're just blind rotating into another squad. There is the Nox gas grenade pushing out. They do have the massive 66. Almost gets the knock. And there we go. We'll be able to finish off the Gibraltar. Is it in time? Six is able to get it. And Pander stays alive. But for how long he hits top 10 for his squad. So he'll get the additional placement points. But they are out throughout all that. TSM have been able to find some points as well. A season for the team that are playing underneath the yellow tanks. Nice job by Season. This is the moment they've been waiting for. Those teams to be sliding down the hill. Unfortunately for them, it wasn't as many players as it could have been because they all just brutally were taken out by six over towards the side. It was doing serious damage with the gas grenade and also switched on over to both of his weapons right there. But SCN now, Kenny's going to have to do something with his drone. It's really about gathering information as TSM just got done wiping things up over towards this house but i would love to see kenny utilize his emp like he did before i think that we've seen Kenny do some really great plays where they wait for the bubbles to go away then they utilize that then the emp comes through they wait for the defensive bombardment to land at the same time and all these players take a ton of damage as we have a double tomcat rat camp yeah, it's going to be Dracos and Blueberry Smalls for Lonely Fence. But here's the fight team. Pringles getting pushed now by 303. But Pringles get the first frag. Bambino to go down. Never mind. It's a one-for-one -one exchange. It's down to a 1v2 as Fury will fall. 303 finally will bleed here as they do get scanned out by a drone. But it doesn't look like any team is right up to the challenge to try and push them on the high ground. Now the seven squads, 17 players remaining as the zone will start closing in. What is the play for 303? They might have to play for the yellow silos there. Really nowhere else for them to try to uh, try to play off of. We saw Season holding the bottom of it, but here's Team Liquid. They've got the angle to actually look in on that uh, for the time being. We'll see how long Flinker tries to hold on to this angle as try to focus out this horizon who's caught out in the middle of nowhere uses that black hole as well and they will be able to finish off dracos now flanker has to rejoin the squad he will use that beast of the hunt have that extra movement speed as well as he throws in the scans and liquid found a nice little corner with the rocks over here and it looks like this is what 303 has done as well they've pushed on to the yellow barrels here comes the scan and flanker drops down to get some cover behind this rock but he is getting tagged up liquid not able to heal up flanker really low 
they throw down the defensive bombardment along with the bubble here but 303 will back away and now they're getting jumped upon by season and season get the knock onto pyrodize ask he tries to find the flank angle but that one's going to take too long he's going to take so much ring damage throughout all of this you see season finish off 303 tsm they are now here on the compound the ring does pull pretty far from them but this is the final slow ring by the way as liquid were able to survive that barrage i like that aggressive play from snipe down and the good help from reps over his shoulder but when you look at it from house point of view it looks like he's just a little bit overextended so i wouldn't be surprised if snipe had to queue back over towards his team as we have five teams and still some rats around here somewhere as team pop tarts is elected to take inside the blue trailer we know where tsm is we know where liquid is and there's one of the rats that gets eliminated. That is the final rat. That's going to be Blueberry Smalls. Yeah. So Pop-Tarts, uh, Liquid, we got Season, and TSM. It's going to be a 3v3, v3, v3. And it's almost like four corners here. Um, each corner, well, you know what you know what I mean. Each direction of the ring uh, currently occupied by a squad right now. You were talking about Kenny with that EMP. He could just absolutely grief a team. If uh, the team notices the EMP go out, you'll see defensive barns going down on that area as well. Right now, though, they are getting aggressive onto Liquid as Stomps gets the knock onto uh, Hotsick there. And Season are going to try and take advantage of that. They have the uh, numbers advantage. They take out Flanker and they just need to take out one more but slow playing this as pop get pushed by tsm impulse is the only one alive he wants to try and get this thirst now and that is one of tsm down that's snipe down that is bleeding out in season are taking advantage of this in the final 3v2 they have them pinned into a corner here rambles the one that goes for the peak with the arm shield and he will try to push out but they could just bide their time now back off let the ring do their work for them and season We'll take game number five.